Hello everyone and welcome to my guide for Grand Company Squadrons. Squadrons are very useful to get buffs for your character that are equivalent to the grade 3 FC buffs. And that will last for 2 hours and you can get 10 of each buff per week of your choice. Obviously you can't stack the same FC buffs uh, with the same type of Grand Company Squadron buff. For example if your FC is running Heat of Battle 3 which is 15% battle XP and you also pop the Grand Company Squadron buff for battle XP the, the Squadron one won't count but you can instead use a different buff that your FC aren't currently running this way you can get around your FC not r running the buffs that you want just get the Squadron version of for yourself First of all we need to unlock the squadrons and I just completed Arum Vale dungeon and it's part of the Grand Company quests when you keep ranking up. For more details of each step when ranking up refer to my alt retainer guide. I show every step there but this video is gonna be focused on the squadrons. So when the, once the quest is handed in for completing Arum Vale dungeon come to the Grand Company NPC and ask for promotion, which costs 9,000 Grand Company seals. I also go into detail how to get seals easier in my retainer guide as well. There are a lot of ways to get seals easily. So if you want more detail for that, refer to that guide. So once you rank up, you will get this cutscene, basically letting you know that you can unlock squadrons and accept this new quest right here. Ah, oh, I accidentally said no, I always do this. <laughs> yes. So this is for Gridania Grand Company. You get it's the same thing with all the other Grand Companies, basically. You initially get three squadrons, but you can't do any mission until you get four. The way you get four, as the game will also explain it to you, you need to do challenge log. After doing certain challenge log, it can be any challenge log, it doesn't matter which one you do. Just do one or two and you will get the notification that you can recruit your fourth squadron member. So once you do that, it tells you to go to the enlistment papers and it tells you that you need to do a challenge log. Yeah, challenge log. Okay, I'm gonna do that and I'll be back. I'll do any challenge log. Also, which squadrons you get by doing challenge logs depends on which type of challenge log you are doing. For example, gold saucer challenge logs can get the snowman Lalafell. More, of, more frequently. I will uh, put a link in the video description where it tells you which type of challenge log gets you who gets you which squadron members. So depending on which type of squadron you want to build, maybe you want to build all Lalafer or all cats or whatever, you can just use this and focus on those challenge logs that get you these races. So that's a good thing to know. I'll put that in the video description. Well, here is an easy challenge log to do. In the gold saucer, you just punch this thing a few times. Okay, we just completed the challenge log. We didn't get a notification. Let's get another one. You can get two challenge logs done with this mini game per week just check your challenge log list there is tons of easy ones and there we go that's the second one and we got a notification it says a new recruit has arrived view enlistment papers in the barracks now we go back to Gridania 
or whichever city grand company you decided to join. Alright, we have a new recruit. Now we're gonna accept his application or her. I don't know which one. <laughs> Alright, recruit. And now we can do the missions. Squadron formed. Now we talk to him. Squadron missions. We can deploy them now. First quest is just a tutorial. It always gets completed. Now you can see all of these attributes at the top. There are three different stats. Physical ability. Mental ability. And tactical ability. Each mission is randomly requires certain amount of each stats. It's not always the same. Especially the weekly missions always change around. But we will get into more details later on when we unlock training as well. For now, let's just send the squadrons to mission. We meet all the three stats, so... Alright. How many hours this one takes? 18 hours, real hours. So I will be back tomorrow. <laughs> Alright, it's the next day. Let's see here. Mission successful, and they all got to level 7. And now we can basically start to train them as well. That board right there is how you train them. The way it works is... Let's open it up. You get three trainings per day. It resets with the Grand Company Supply and Provision missions. It resets at the same time. So three trainings a day, each take one hour. And you can pick a stat of your choice to increase. But also keep in mind later on, this is not gonna be a thing forever where you gain stats. After a while, like after you do this three times, then if you want to increase a stat, you will decrease something else in the process. So it just depends on the mission. If the mission requires more strength than tactical ability, then you train strength to reduce tactical. For now, they just want us to train anything. Let's, let's do a balanced. If you do balance, you don't increase anything. You just gain XP. Yeah, actually, let's just go for strength. We don't know what the next mission needs yet. Whether it needs more strength or tactical. But the first training is just a must to do. I'll be back when it's done. Alright, the training is complete one hour later. Let's check this out. What's the next mission? Squadron missions. We have a bunch of missions now. One is level 10, one is 5, one is 15. We can't do the level 10 and 15 until all squadron members are of that level. Or I think it's based on average level of all four members. Something like that. Not 100% on that. But yeah, we can't do this. So we have to do the level 5 one. And as you can see... We need 200 of the mental ability. We only have 162. As you can see, it shows red. We, we're not meeting the requirement for that one. We're fine on the other two stats, tactical and physical. So what we have to do is do more training and increase the, t uh, the mental ability. So let's do another training so we meet all the stats. We should be able to after this training. And it's two hours... No, it's one hour until reset. So if I can send them to the third training before reset, that will be nice. Then I get all three done for the day and then I get three again. Because reset will happen. 
So I'll make sure to resend the training in time. All right, training complete. What well, that? This is one hour later. Now they are level nine. But I may as well just keep training. I can do one more training, then reset is in over one hour, and then I may as well get to level ten and try to do that mission straight away. So if you're close to reset, you may as well just do all your training. If not, it's not a big deal, you can just send them to the mission. Like if we were to send to the mission, we would have reached all our stat requirements anyway. So if you don't have any training left, it doesn't matter, just send them to a mission, which is 18 hour missions. But if you are playing the game and are available, just send them to training before you send them to the missions. Because the missions take longer. Alright, training done. And I should get three more. Yeah. But let's see what the level 10 mission is about. Oops. Okay, level 10 we need to train strength and... Tactical, physical and tactical. So what we will do is while we train, we will increase physical and tactical. So this option right here. But as you can see, we decrease the middle one. But I think it will balance out. So we'll do one of these and then maybe we will do two of this one. So we don't touch the stats. We just do it for the XP. But... Let's get this done first. Alright, that's that training is done as well. And we leveled up to now the level 10 mission. Well, we're still not hitting the requirement. But I'm gonna send it to mission anyway because I'm about to no stop playing for the day. So yeah, I'm going to just deploy them anyway. And we will see you in 18 hours. Alright, should be back from mission. I actually didn't play a lot today, so this is like not exactly 18 hours after I sent them to the mission. So I don't have time to do training right now. So what I'm gonna do is just resend them to an 18 hour mission straight away. Because I didn't get to play the game a lot today, so I'll just have to resend them straight away. Level 15. I'm level 17, so I can do this one. Um, I actually, I, I guess I will do one training just so I can meet two of the stats. So I'm gonna train physical for it. And then I'm gonna send it to that mission. Wait, uh, let me check one thing. So as you can see, if we increase strength, we decrease the other two. Actually, if we train physical and mental, now the mental is more than 20, so you are gonna need 20 over 20, so that's two more training sessions for, for the mental ability. So, yeah, we'll just have to do the physical alone. Yeah, because each time you train, you can increase it by 20. So if we're increasing one stat by 40, the, o the other stats will decrease by 20 each. If we increase two of the stats by 20, the third one will decrease as well. Oh, it's by the same amount actually, yeah. Alright, we just do strength and that should be enough. Training done. Now time for 18 hour mission. Alright, so you get that point. You pretty much repeat this until level 40. Even if you don't meet the stats, still send them to the mission before you log off for the day. Even if the mission fails, you still get a lot of XP, so still do it. And we also get this enlistment manual. It basically increases your chances to get a recruitment after you do challenge locks. Alright, so doing challenge logs, I got some more recruits. I got these three, the bottom ones. 
And uh, switching out the fourth one to this new recruit, the white mage Lalafell. It gets me to re to meet all the requirements for the stats. So I don't need to train more. I can just deploy for level 20 mission and be done with that. So just do more challenge logs, get other recruits. Because each recruit have different stats. So you can mix and match and see which one works the best. There is also this page that helps you with that. I will leave it in the video description. Basically you put in the recruitments you have and their stats and it will tell you which ones to use for each mission. Basically you put in what the mission requires and who do you have, what are their stats and it will tell you who to use. You can also use that. I'll put it in the video description. But yeah, I'm good to go for the level 20 mission. Ah, finally! By the time we did the level 20 mission, we're level 31 now. Jeez, usually it doesn't go this badly, but I didn't have members with the right stats. Okay, so this thing right here, these books, there are blue, red, and green one, I think. Defense is, it changes your squadron's class to a tank, tank class. So you can change your classes to change their stats and so on, if you want to. This would have been helpful before I did the level 20 mission, not right now. But yeah, it is what it is. You can also buy these books with Grand Company seals. If you want to change your squadron classes. Yeah. Okay, we have now new missions. These missions are like doing dungeons, basically. You go in with your squadrons. And... You will gain experience as well if you want to level your classes, your own classes as well as your squadrons. Alright, just successfully finished the level 30 mission. I was only meeting two of the stats as well and I still completed it. And now the game introduced chemistries. So what are chemistries? Basically... After each completed mission, your squadron members will get a chemistry and it's something like meet a type of condition and you will get this in return. In this case, this chemistry that I just got is when this Lala fell, Nana saw me accompany a Thamutarch, another squadron that is a Thamutarch class. When they accompany that Thamutarch in, for the same mission, when they are both doing both doing the same mission, XP will be increased by 20%. So what you do is go to your board, regiment board, view squadron roster and right click or press square to confirm the chemistry. And later on there will be chemistries that reward you with gill, scripts, grand company seals, MGP, crystal cluster, materia and so on. So, which type of chemistry you get depends on what mission are you are doing. On my main character, for example, I am focusing on having my squadrons getting me gill, so I think that's what I'm gonna be focusing on on every character. But for now, we just take what we get. Just make sure you confirm chemistry, because if you send them to mission again, this that one will be lost. The one that previously you had, it will be lost. If you didn't confirm it. If you confirm it, like now, this one is when above level 50 XP is earned, but will be increased by 10%. Once you confirm it, you will have it on forever. You will not lose it. But just make sure you confirm it. And if you get something that is better, you send this same squadron to the next mission and you get something better. Let's say it will be like, for example, I'm just saying it as an example. Let's say it, would, it will become increased by 20%. Obviously, you want to confirm that one instead and keep that one. But yeah, just keep an eye out for chemistries and see which one you like and just keep that one. 
for now we will we have this and we just continue as we should we just train keep training and keep sending to 18 hour missions until we unlock the level 40 mission which is my goal right now oh yeah one thing i forgot to mention is the mission affinity you see on the top it says mission affinity thamutarch lancer lalafell so if your squadrons are any of these things, then the condition to get the thing for the chemistry is bypassed. For example, right here. Mission affinity is an archer. You see on my archer, there is a arrow up. It makes the condition nullify and I will get 100% the chemistry. So the nor normally she only has 30% chance to receive bonus company seals and she has to not be accompanying the same race So it's grayed out even but when it's mission affinity archer Everything's bypassed. She gets 100% guaranteed to get her check chemistry effect All right level 35 Mission complete. Oh, 10% chance to c receive crafter scripts. And now we unlock level 40 mission. This mission will require to you to meet all stats. Yeah, it tells you as well. Right there. Unlike this one I just completed where I was meeting only one of the stats. Or two of the stats. This one, yeah. This one needs all three stats, so we have to keep training until we do. And once we do this, then the weekly missions will unlock where we can get the buffs I was talking about at the beginning of the guide. So, business as usual, keep training and try to meet the stats. For now I'm just gonna do XP training. I'll also get new recruitments to help me try to get the stats that needed. Oh man, freaking finally I meet all the stat requirements for the level 40 mission. Ah, oh, nice, okay. So the initial three members are level 45. You know the initial three members before you do any challenge logs. And then the fourth member is this Thamu Tarch level 38. Uh, maybe you can try changing the class of anyone to Thamutarch, maybe it will work out. Or if, uh, if you get a fourth member from doing challenge, challenge logs with the same stats that I have. Yeah, you can just try, miss, try and miss and match members and get it up there. Alright. Mission complete. Oh, got some new chemistry as well. Disciple of magic and land materia. Tank specific materia. Now we don't need those. Anyway, we're complete and that ranks up the Grand Company r rank as well. And now we can do the weekly missions. Weekly level 40 and 50 missions. Now our Grand Company seals cap increased to 80k as well. We can increase it to 90k further by doing 5 of those dungeons which I'll do. First Serpent Lieutenant. Alright. Now, as you can see, now, squadron missions, now we unlock the level 50 missions. This one is seal, uh, priority seal allowance. This, if we complete this mission, we get 10 of these, which gives us 15% seal bonus for 2 hours. Amazing buff. Now, we use this when we spam quick ventures, 
which refer to my retainer guide for that. We spam quick ventures until armory chest is full of gear to hand in for the expert deliveries. But before we hand in, we pop this to get even more seals. And then the next mission gives Gold Saucer VIP car card, which increases MGP by 15% for 2 hours. Decent one, especially when Make It Rain event happens, where everything MGP is increased by 15%. Well, 50% and you increase it further by 15 more using this So I would get these for that event if you want MGP stuff And then this one is battle manual basically 15% XP gain when doing battle content Great for leveling your jobs But it doesn't stack with the FC buffs none of these stack with the FC buffs so be careful with that So if you're having the 10% from FC that one won't count but if you want 15% instead, then use this. This one is a crafter... Sorry, gatherer XP. 20% for 2 hours. Crafters of the same buff. Now the crafter and gatherer ones do stack with the commercial and engineering manuals. These commercial and engineering manuals you can pop it together with the squadron buff and you get the effect of both actually so extremely good all right and next is spirit bomb buff i use it a lot during new patches or when i'm prepping material for new patches refer to my crafter and gatherer material farming guides and i I refer to squadron buff a lot when those guides come up, so this is where it's gotten from. And next is... that was a spirit bone. And next is rationing manual. This is great for raiding to extend the duration of food for two hours. And uh, gear maintenance, amazing for quicksynth. It saves you tons and tons of gear when quicksynthing, and your gear will not g get broken as quickly. So, really good buff as well. And uh, last but not least, uh, you will get feed reduction for teleport. Teleporting for two hours, which is also great. Especially when you are gathering legendary nodes, you they teleport a lot here and there great time to pop this one the thing is though we can only get one of these missions completed per week same with the fourth level 40 ones level 40 ones only give five of the buffs so i do recommend passing on those because if you do the level 41 and complete it then you're done for that week you cannot do the level 51 so you'd rather do the 51 every week so you can get 10 of the buffs instead of 5. So we're gonna be focusing on this. Just focus on whichever buff is relevant for that week for you and that should be it. For now what I want first is the Grand Company seal increase. That's what I want right now. So whichever mission you want ba basically you just work towards getting two of the stat requirements if you're meeting two of the stats physical mental or tactical you still have a great chance of completing the mission you don't need to meet all three stats like the initial mission we just did that one required all three stats to be met but these weekly missions these weekly level 50 missions are good in that regard you don't have to meet all three stats at the same time just two of them is enough and usually by just swapping out a couple of squadron members you can get there right now I cannot but I can just work on uh, training oh yeah we also get stat increase we got the cap was increased the squadron attributes cap went from 280 to 400 now we can increase some more stats without decreasing anything, which is awesome. So I'm gonna do this training right now. Alright. Oh yeah, it is also a level 50 mission, so we need to be level 50 average of the four squadrons. So, for that reason, 
I think I wanna get the missions out of the way, the command missions. We need to do five different command missions. We can't just respam same one. So I'm gonna do five different command missions because I also need to level the squadrons anyway. They're not level 50 yet. So it's gonna help with that. So let's start with Arm Veil, why not? <laughs> okay, so it's gonna be my character and three squad other squadron. Oh, they do not meet the level required. Okay, so we have to do level 40 mission then. 40 or less. Maybe 41, maybe it's the average level. No, it's the... It's based on one squadron member. In this case, that... That... Uh, Rogue is level 40 right now. So we have to do brave locks, I guess it's okay. So it kind of just works like a normal dungeon with uh, trust, if you've done that before. But you also have commands like, uh, for example, engage, you order your squadron to engage the enemy. So I'm gonna use that when I order my tank to yeah, engage. Okay, and now I can uh, help heal and DPS as well. Yeah, so basically it's just like the trust, except that you have these commands. Disengage and execute limit break. That's it, really simple. By the way, you might find yourself having the commands disappear for to, to order the squadrons around. But you can find it here. You go to actions and traits, orders and... Uh, this is for the, your chocobo and this is for squadrons. You can find it here. I think it's better, yeah. It's better to just add it to your hotbar anyway. Okay, so I just... Not gonna worry about this Dungeon just yet. I wanna do my weekly Darko. level 50 quest. Okay. And now we have... A new flagged mission. Flagged mission... Sapper strike. So after you complete this, you will get your max Grand Company rank and you get the 90k seal cap. And to unlock this mission, this is what we did. Oops, sorry. We completed five uh, command missions. I completed Halatali, Totorak, Brave Locks, Stone Vigil, and Dark Halt. You can do any of these, Just you just need to do five of them, five different ones. And you all unlock this mission. And it's one of those where we have to meet all three stats in order to do it. And it's a level 50 mission, so average level 50. So since it's only two days until reset, and I might not complete the mission because it's still gonna be RNG even if you meet two of the stats. In this situation, I'll just try the level 40 mission. And take five of the buffs instead of ten. At least this week I, so I don't miss anything. After that, I'll level up further and I'll be, I'll be able to do level 50 mission every week from there on but just for this week so I don't miss the rewards for this week I'm just gonna go with the level 40 it's fine we are getting 5 instead of 10 it's better than getting nothing besides we're gonna get experience but even if it fails okay ah our mission was successful alright we got a chemistry for the Marauder, 40% chance to receive bonus MGP. I guess we'll take that for now. Nice! We got 5 of the priority seal allowances. Now that gives us seal sweetener 3. So when we hand in expert deliveries to the Grand Company, we will gain 15% extra seals. Which is awesome. For getting retainer ventures okay 
now we can focus on as you can see uh, once you complete one level 40 or 50 weekly missions you can only do one now the level 50 are grayed out as well but it's fine as I said I only had two days before reset now I'm gonna level up to do this one next Flagged mission, Sapper Strike done. Oh, it was a PS5 trophy too. Okay. Interesting. First time seeing this, by the way. I haven't done this on my main character yet. Serpent Captain. Alright, so that's it. And now we have 90,000 Grand Company seals as cap. So from this point on you just do your weekly level 50 missions, basically. Depending on which of the buffs you want. You do just do that mission. And as of right now I'm recording this, they have announced that they will are updating the squadron content. So... If there is anything significant, I will make a continued guide about this. Well, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please thumbs up. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. Appreciate you for that. And if you want to support the content further, you can do that on Patreon or Twitch. Hope you have a great day. Take care. Bye bye.